Hey, welcome to another episode of It Resolves. My name's Kevin. My name's Betty Botter. Bought some butter. This is Will. Hi, I'm <laughs> Will. We were doing vocal warm-ups before. Um, yeah, that's what we were doing. And I feel oh, so loose. You so feel loose? Good. That's good. Yeah. Can I teach you the best vocal and facial warm-up there is? Yeah. It's called Big Face, Little Face. Let me take my glasses. Big you Face, ready? Little Face? Yeah, you ready? Yeah. Big Face. Oh, little Face. <laughs> Done. It's big right. face, little face. Welcome to It Resolves. Guys, thanks for hanging out with us. Watching on YouTube, <laughs> listening on the podcast <laughs> app or SoundCloud, wherever you are. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Yeah, welcome to the fun, as we like to call it. Um, Before we get into today's episode, check out the Patreon, check out all of that stuff, all in the description below. I also that. should let everybody know, I'm still mm-hmm. sick. Yeah, he's still ill. I mean, um, my heart I'm also up to still, you. for some reason, wearing the same shirt, and you are too. I just weird. Look, anyway, it's my so favorite. yeah, um, I'm sick. So if I look and sound sick, it's because I am. <laughs> and if if it quacks, it's probably a duck. Here's what you guys can do: if you're if you're if you care about it resolves, if you care about Ooh, me, okay. if you care about Will, Bling. take a moment. Bling. Like the video. Comment on the video. Tell me, be like, yo, get better. It'll be awesome. Kevin's trying to we really... make you feel sorry for me. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> no. Um, what the heck? <laughs> Today's episode is going to be interesting, to say the least. It is. Um, mostly because oh of the gosh. mood. Uh, a little a little lightheartedness to, yeah. to set the tone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, b- before we get into this topic... Let's get the pleasantries out of the way. Yeah. You already told them where they can find us. I did. You want a roll it card of the day clip? I think it's time. I do too. I All right, feel guys. It. Rolling in three, two, one. Pine Barrens. Pine Barrens comes into play tapped. <laughs> it says tap, add one colorless mana to your mana pool, or tap, add black or green to your mana pool. Or is it? Pine Barrens deals one damage to you. Sorry. It's an elf card and the text got weird. Um, only good and limited during this block. Other than that, no. Absolute garbage. You think so? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so here's the thing. It's yeah. like, uh, on one hand, know. it's a dual land. Yes. Great. On the downside, there's a million other dual lands. First of all, that also come into play tapped. Guild gates. Mm-hmm. Um, the tap lands that come in tapped, but when they come in, you gain a life. Uh, oh, from, gain lands. from, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, they're from cons cons correct um <clears throat> all of those and many others don't deal you a damage when you go f- to make a colored mana true um true i will say with generic mana i guess being a thing this has an upside over something like a guild gate that well, it yeah. makes a generic mana but like you would never run this in something like well, that would it's just not good i think no. in a limited environment it's a good color fix- fixer which you yes. need in a limited environment. But other than that, no, it's terrible. Yeah. I mean, it, okay. The two biggest flaws are that it comes in tapped. <coughs> if it just came in regular and everything else was the same. It would be that, a pain land. Yes. At and, that it, point. and it'd be better. But yeah. you cannot fetch it either. So it becomes a draw mm-hmm. that comes in tapped that deals you with damage to fix your mana. So It's just not good. It's as, got so much downside. Yes. As... <laughs> You can't print stupidly powerful lands anymore because that just makes everything too playable. Yeah. Uh, and that's fair. That's fine. And that's a whole other topic for a whole other day. That's so true. You have to give lands little flaws like that. Yeah, yeah. Like the bicycle lands, they come in tapped. But you can cycle them and they fix your mana. Yeah. Don't deal damage to you. This feels like it's got all of those flaws. Yeah. Because oh, you, I would agree. You know, can't fetch it. Comes in tapped. Deals yeah. the damage. That's three. That's too many. You're out. It's just bad. Strike yeah. out. Pine Barrens. Not a great card of the day. No. Although I do like seeing a land. We usually don't get mm-hmm. lands, so that's, that's kind of cool. That's true. Um, lands are neat. Um, they are neat. And the most important part of magic. Yeah. And that's another topic. That is another. No, another that's day. a whole other topic. God, that, could be, that could be a few episodes, honestly. <laughs> I think um, I would agree, though, that lands. Are we'll, most important. We'll, yeah, that's a yeah. whole other episode. All right. I'll there's talk- a, There's a specific reason why I say that, but. What is it? I'm curious now. Um, so the argument that you can't win a game with only lands is incorrect. Mm-hmm. 
because they're main lands. And but you can't win a deck with. Well, that's not true either. Uh, mana list dredge. Mana list dredge. <laughs> oh. But there's only one deck. Yeah, but there's also only one land only deck. But land then, only. I mean, there are other land based. You can decks. build a land only deck, and it's very bad. You could build a deck where your win cons are main lands. Yeah, like, that's fair. Mutable, Shambly event, whatever. But that deck is not going to win at modern. No. That deck is not going to win vintage, no. <laughs> etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. Um, you know. Uh. A whole other thing. Yeah, whole, whole other, other thing, thing. Whole other thing. Um, so here's the deal, guys. For today's main topic, we're gonna talk about something that may be a bit controversial. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We we want to frame this, and that we're gonna be giving sort of our opinions on it. Sure. Just having an open discussion. We're not necessarily coming to any sort of like solid conclusion about this. I mean, yeah. um, I think we'd ideally like to, but if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But we do want to hear your opinions on it. Um, and yeah. today's topic is net decking. Yes. Uh, this is obviously something that comes up due to standard a lot because standard is a very ever-changing environment. Right. And so a lot of people will go on to the latest top eight lists and net deck, meaning they will find the best deck and just build it and then go to play it. Right. Um, right. So <coughs> we we said originally when we were making this that we were really going to shy away from topics or yeah. saying things or doing things that are kind of you know flagrant or that the community feels super strongly about yeah um but if you want to say it's a slow news day that's fine <laughs> um but we've we've hashed out a lot of standard stuff there's not been a, a recent event no. um so i figured uh now's the time because yeah it, you brought this up and i think it's I a did. good topic i um, did uh net decking <coughs> for and against comes up at every local game store yeah comes up at every kitchen table um, of people who take this game seriously enough to care. I'll say yeah, that. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's a little hairy because of our feelings. Yeah. So we um, might, uh, hopefully we don't offend you too bad. Don't no, run away. It's, a, but, it's okay. You know, if we do, we're, I mean, this is just a discussion, right? Like yeah. this isn't meant to be taken too seriously. Yeah. We're not going to harp on this point too long, but yeah. it's just it's just a discussion. Um sure. and it's one that we hope you'll take part on in uh commenting below. Yeah. Letting us know what you think. That's fine. Absolutely. Please actually I encourage that. Yeah. Uh, I would love to know what anybody thinks about net decking out there. Yeah. You could be absolutely this could be your first episode of it resolves. It could be your thirty whatever Fifth, episode. I think. Thirty fifth. Yeah. Wow, that's we're right. up to thirty five. Jeez. <laughs> yes. Thirty fifth episode, whatever it is <laughs> Just tell us what you think, guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'd love to hear your opinion because a lot of people uh, feel very strongly about it, and I like new ideas like that. Um, so let's yeah. talk first. <clears throat> sure. Um, let's get the negative out of the way. Why is net decking considered a bad thing? So a lot of players will say that it encourages uh, a lot of FNMs and mm -hmm. tournaments to be almost too competitive, toxically yeah. competitive, where it seems like the fun aspect of magic is thrown out the window in lieu of winning okay that's one yeah no i agree negative. i mean so i agree to an extent i will say sure. um i think at an fnm for instance let's mm -hmm. let's start small scale on okay. an fnm sized event that's meant more to have fun that's not meant yeah. to be super competitive it's just meant to be a fun time mm -hmm. you hang out with some friends in your community yeah. and hopefully have a good time playing magic Maybe meet some new people <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. Uh, that's how it's worked for us, at least. <laughs> um, and so with stuff like that, I I think um, net decking is not necessarily like wrong or anything. I don't want to say sure. that. But it's like I wouldn't consider it as open-mindedly in that instance, I guess. Well, I, I see what you're saying. Does if, that make sense? If that's, your, if that's the magic you're used to. If you're just playing FNMs, like you don't have to be competitive. You don't have yeah. to be playing top tier one decks. Sure. Um, if you're playing a Grand Prix or especially a Pro Tour, first of all, if you're on a Pro Tour, your deck is you know deck. better anyway. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, on a Grand Prix though, uh, you are playing for in a, in a competitive environment. Mm -hmm. You're looking to hopefully do well. Heck and yeah. so I'm not against looking at the top eight decks. Maybe mm -hmm. not making the exact same. Like literally pulling the list. I'll say this. If it's the day before the GP, you pull a list off of a top eight list and think you're going to do well with that list, sorry, it's not going to go that way. You could get real lucky, maybe, but the probability is pretty low. Yeah, um, we'll talk about 
We'll talk about some reasons why. Yeah. Why do you think that is? So, first of all, if you're net decking, you're pulling off the best quote unquote deck mm-hmm. at not the tournament you're going to. You don't know what the metagame call is going to be. You don't sure. know if it's changed. You don't know if there's a better deck that came out that all of a sudden just annihilates that deck. Sure. Uh, this is assuming you've done zero research. You literally okay. just pulled a list from the internet. Net decking um, is all you've done. No testing. No testing, no nothing. nothing like that. On top of that, no testing. You don't know how to play the deck effectively. Um, mm-hmm. If you test the deck, you find out about little interactions that you didn't necessarily think of on the surface. Sure. Um, it's very easy to look at a deck and see, okay, I get the overall, how does it work? And that's fine. You should absolutely do that. However... When you're going to an actual competitive tournament, there are going to be plays that you don't think of that come up. That sure. just happens. Um, and so you have to be prepared and know, okay, what is my best out to this? Uh, and if you don't know your deck well enough, if you got it the day before, you're just yeah. not going to know it as well. You're not going to be as comfortable and you're not mm-hmm. ideally going to be doing as well, even though you have theoretically a better deck. Yeah, and that's my biggest point as well, is that where knowledge is the most valuable hidden resource in magic not knowing the cards you're <laughs> playing with that's, that's not good yeah if you don't know the specific out you need to get into whatever situation you might draw it and flip it to the back of your hand yeah and just stick that hydra that you need or whatever and that's could might not be the right play yeah it right? may lose you the game i mean absolutely you, it's just <clears throat> so like the idea of net decking is considered stealing is like in some cases yeah, what net, people consider it. That's honestly one of the biggest criticisms. Yeah. Is, and and I find it to be so hollow. I do too. I don't like that argument. I don't at all. This game is about the community building decks out of these cards. If you happen to get the same right. deck as somebody else, whether it's net decked or you just built the same deck as mm-hmm. somebody else, that's not stealing. <laughs> like yeah. you just you found a good deck. I mean, <laughs> that's fine. Yeah. Um if the reason people look at the top eight statistics is because they want to see what the better decks are of course and that's fine <laughs> like yeah that's what you should do so it, we're in the internet age when magic are, came, really believe it or not wow those of you who only by quickly. seeing us on the internet <laughs> uh no we we absolutely are it's the age of information right mm-hmm. everything's out there um places like uh mpg goldfish mtg top eight they don't exist to make magic less fun. No. They exist to kind of pick it apart <laughs> and see what works, what doesn't, and make yeah. everyone kind of better. Yeah. Uh, kind of like a rising tide raises all ships, or high tide raises all ships, whatever that is. Whatever allegory. Can you one of those things? Does that make sense? I, I don't know, guys. More Sorry. information is good. <laughs> right. That's what I'm saying. Um, yeah. Let's go on to point number two. Yeah, yeah. Um, People say it makes their cards more expensive and the formats that you net deck in more expensive to play. Ooh, does about, it, though? Think about this. Uh, Vizier of Remedies. Yeah. He's uncommon, just like Kitchen Finks. Yeah. Before Vizier Company was a deck, he was 15 cents. I don't know what he is right now. I could look it up for my argument, actually, and I should before I but make it. But that would have happened whether people... Because it got good because somebody made that interaction, not because they net decked it. Well, no, but that's what I'm saying. They made that interaction, and yeah. now it's a deck on the. It net. is a deck now because it is it. good, and now people will net deck it. But I mean, I'm going to. I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I uh. don't really buy this argument very much. Um, I don't think the so like the thing about it is net decking is supposed to pull the best deck. If it's just sure. the best deck anyway, people are going to get it regardless of whether they're net decking it or mm-hmm. whether they're just trying to play a good deck. And so the price of the good card is going to go up either way. People net decking it will cause a spike, but it's not going to be... Well, it's uh, still only 45 cents. So. There you go. Like, I mean... Maybe I'm wrong. It's not uh, going to be, you know... I don't think it's a significant price difference for something like that. Like Kitchen Finks, you mentioned is a good uncommon. Yeah. It's just a good uncommon. It's played in a lot of decks. It's $10. And so, yeah. It's... It's gonna be ten dollars because it's a good card, not because people net decked it. Um, I don't know. It, there are cards that I think are better that are worth worth less than Kitchen Finks, that are better than Kitchen Finks. Right, but Kitchen Finks goes in multiple styles of decks. I mean, this is true. You know what I mean? Like it's 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 hits a lot of decks and it's good. 
And so okay. that's why it's expensive, so it's like not just because, yeah, it's not thing. just because okay. people net, I mean, people do net deck it. I'm not, okay. and I'm not saying that's an insignificant price difference because people do, but like everybody would have to net deck just to make that price like worthwhile mentioning, I feel like. Okay. I, I don't see this is because it's just a good d deck and this a good is card. Like, this like, is <laughs> one of the few arguments that I think holds more water mm -hmm. than some other ones. Um, in that there's more demand for a specific card. Yeah. So, I mean, rarity aside, right? Yeah. That goes up. Um, Which happens. But, you know, and there, that I'm, makes sense. I'm not saying it's insignificant. I just think that, like, it, whether you net deck or not, if it's a good card, it's going to get the price up. It's going to go up in price regardless. You know what I that mean? That does make sense, because Vizier specifically goes in one deck. Yeah. So it's 45 I see what you're cents. Saying. Like, <laughs> I see what you're saying. If you think 45 cents is expensive in Magic, I'm sorry, but you're incorrect. <laughs> oh, man. Have you heard of Tarmogoy? <laughs> uh, okay. You like spend $100 for a piece of cardboard? <laughs> Not uh, even. Um. <laughs> <laughs> this one's got perforations. Uh Point number three, yeah. uh, it encourages players to be uncreative or not creative or less creative. This I actually agree with more than the other two. Okay. Um, so if you're, again, if you're using mm. the pure sense of net decking where you just pull a deck and you go and play it the next day or whatever, well, that's well, super uncreative. That's like net decking in its infancy. Yes. Right? If you're net decking to get a basis for a deck, this has less of a draw for me because- Sure. It's, it's I think, pretty normal for people to go on and look at the top eight list and say, okay, this deck looks interesting, maybe mm -hmm. I should build this, and then play with it a little bit. And that's when you play test that deck. That's when you figure out those little interactions. That's when you mm -hmm. figure out what cards maybe you should switch out for something else. Maybe not have the perfect 100% list that you found originally. Sure. Um, that's actually being creative. I think that's creative in its essence. So, like, that's not bad, in my opinion. Um 100% net decking that isn't being created. I mean, that's just not like. <laughs> I guess, yeah. If you're it, it, hypothetically, if you just look up Marty vehicles mm -hmm. and click buy a TCG player and throw $300 at it. Yeah. Sure. You're right. That's not creative. Um, But it's always served as a tool <coughs> of information for me. Uh, yeah. So us as magic players are playing a game that forces you to be creative every time you shuffle your deck because you yeah. don't know what lines are going to come up. Yeah. Uh, anyone who says a net deck isn't creative should watch the match where Yu Yu Watanabe thought seizes himself <laughs> to turn on that was one awesome. of his cards. Yeah. Uh, no other player I would put money on has ever done that. And if you've only done it at a kitchen table, you need to go play a tournament right now. <laughs> You're a freaking genius. No, I mean that's go a really it. good point. Like you can. You can pull 100% a list that was on the internet. You pull it down. You can find an interaction that wasn't there, wasn't played before. Sure. Sure. Uh, every time you draw your cards, you have to play on the fly from scratch. You yeah. might know the parameters. You might know your deck, but you've, yeah, got yeah. To, you've got to make up the win from there. But I think knowing your deck, and again, this is where net decking, to in its purest sense, sure. becomes sort of the hindrance, is you if you know your deck, it's so much easier to think of those creative interactions where right. you know, okay, if I if I do thought seize myself, mm -hmm. I will turn on this card. Whereas somebody else might look at thought seize who doesn't know their deck and think, oh well, I I only have the opportunity to do this to my opponent. Well, not necessarily, right? Okay, like, right. Um, if you do know that there are cards that interact with that, then that's that's a potential line for you. Sure, but you do have to know the cards. So, and that is assuming that the player <laughs> has not tested their deck extensively, or right, at all, exactly, or isn't exactly. isn't a pro like Watanabe. Like Watanabe. But yeah. there's no pro like Yu Yu. So he's insane. So yeah. good. Such a nice guy. It seems to. I don't know him. He's but got I a just lot assume. of good things to say about many of the other players. Yeah. Um, he's got high praise for a lot of people, mm -hmm. and likewise to him, they think yeah. he's, I at least, and. Many pros think he is one of the best <laughs> players in the world, if not the best. Um, he's certainly in the conversation. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then the fourth point yeah. against net yeah, deckers. Yeah. Net deckers are mean. <laughs> I've heard this. I've heard this. <laughs> okay. M-I-L-G-S. Net deckers are mean. They want to take the fun from everyone else because they only care about winning. I mean, again, if you're looking at net decking in its purest sense, yeah. Sure. 
if you're looking at net decking from the standpoint of I just need to get into standard somehow, like, I don't necessarily think... If you're... I mean, it comes down to your underlying reason for doing it, right? Like, if your reason oh, is, I just want to win f and <laughs> I just want to win F and M. Then, yeah, you kind of are ruining it a little bit. Well, okay, no, I'm gonna disagree <coughs> because no one goes into F and M and says, "I know I'm gonna lose four games, and that's why I'm here." Well, okay, fair. You're there to play Magic and hopefully beat some people, win some packs. Sure. Yeah, yeah. No one goes to F and M wanting the opposite outcome of going zero and four. No, you're right? right. You're right. So everybody who's sitting at those tables know everyone around them wants to beat them. Yeah. And you should know that. Yeah. Kevin, yeah. if you and I played each other, I would try my darndest to beat you. Well, yeah. And I would absolutely always beat you. If that has always <laughs> been the case, that might be right. <laughs> However, uh, let the record show it is not. Um, <laughs> but, and I would expect you to play. 70 30. Uh, I'd say 60 40. Same you think way. So? Yeah. You probably, yeah, I think All so. Right. I think so. Um, All right. We'll see. But, 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 but. <laughs> I would expect you to play your hardest against me. Yeah, no, that's fair. Right? Like, no one's... You all know why you're there. Well, and I also think, again, in the purest sense of net decking, if you just pull the list and you think, okay, I'm going to win with this list, but you didn't play test, you didn't do anything, you're probably not going to win with the no, list. No, like, you're right. You can have the best deck there by far. That doesn't mean you're going to win. I mean, yeah. the thing about yeah. Magic is it was created to have... A skill side and a luck side right and if you didn't build up your skills with the deck you are relying on the luck and that's not a good thing sure i think you're taking yourself <coughs> really seriously in that you know you've got good cards and you probably do yeah but that doesn't necessarily mean good cards get you the win no it right? doesn't and it that's part of the randomness of magic right you yeah. could get flooded you could get mana screwed as yeah, it's yeah. called whatever it is um so yeah yeah. Net deckers are No. Me. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Sure. All right. All right. So here's some arguments for. Um, yeah, yeah. And I like these. I like uh, these kind of seem logical. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, no, I'm actually not. I'm not against. I'm against 100% net decking. I'm not against sure. actually net decking. Yeah. We know <laughs> what each other thinks. We talked about it a long time yeah. ago, I think. Yeah. But um, the decks are considered well refined and focused. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. Um, not necessarily easy to pilot, but their strategies are lined out. There's no mystery. No. Pros have written articles. Wizards have written articles about certain <laughs> decks and interactions. So when you play them, you kind of know what to expect. Yeah. If you've done your, if research, you've done your research, if you've watched yeah, some yeah. matches, if you've played with the deck, right? If you've piloted well, it. A few and times. this brings up a good point, too, mm -hmm. for the opponent who is against the net decker. Mm -hmm they have the exact same information that the net decker has. Precisely. So like, you know, it's not like it should be a surprise if yeah. like you see, you know, back when Mardu Vehicles was the top deck, which I don't know where it is now, but like- It's still competitive. Still it's still good. competitive. When you see it, you know what it is. Mm -hmm. Like there may be a few cards that are changed out and that's sure. fine. Those are metagame calls, which is what you should do. Yeah. But you know what the deck's trying to do and you should know that just because you play standard. Like right. not because- yeah, I, you uh -huh. should just know. Yeah, like I mean, that, that goes back to a lot of just know the format kind of conversations. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, well, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, <laughs> I was gonna talk about the people who don't like net decking. Uh, so the problems with the decks are fleshed out. Um, these yeah. are a lot tailored more towards average to new players. Yeah. Um, net decks for the person who wants to learn magic are going to be in general easier to pick up and pilot yeah. than building a deck from scratch. Uh, they're tried and true. The flaws in the deck, again, in those articles, in the videos, you can find them pretty well. Yeah. Right. Uh, in in uh, Aetherworks, we knew that if you got in under Aetherworks under turn four, yeah. you had a pretty good shot. That's why Two Ticks Red a, actually did well. A brew <laughs> deck, a rogue deck, <laughs> beat marvel a lot of the time is because it could get in so consistent well and what it amounts to <clears throat> is with a refined deck there's a clear line of play most of the time sure i'm gonna say most you can't count on every little aspect no, of the game but every game. like if you only have traverse the open wall or whatever as your only turn one play in green black constrictor or something like that that is your line that that's what you play turn one yeah end of story there mm -hmm. is i mean you run fatal push so maybe you leave it up but like 
other than that, there's that that's the line. It's right. a very clear one. Most of the refined decks are going to have a fairly clear line until you get into the mid to late game stages where yes. you've set up at that point. What do you do? You know what I mean? Yeah. But like absolutely, the setup process is clear. And so to your point, you're exactly right. So then to the new player or the the sort of mid level player, it helps to sort of have that already fleshed out. So mm -hmm. that way you can get to those points where you start having to make those decisions a little a little easier. You know sure. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <coughs> um, and you're exactly right. Um, and I think that speaks again <clears throat> more to new players. Yeah, more to folks so. who don't understand specific little interactions between sure. cards in the set or in the format, what yeah, have you. Sure. Um, and so number three, we've kind of already touched on it, but it uh, breeds an understandable meta. Yeah. Again, tailored more towards a new player, someone who is not as good, quote unquote, or as experienced in magic. If you can sit down at your laptop for two hours, pick apart a bunch of decks, pick one that you think does considerably well and kind of get the rest of them that are doing well in the format, yeah. you're going to feel good walking into FNM or a GP or whatever it is thinking you've got a good grasp on the game. Whether you do or not is up to the player. Well, yeah, yeah. But that's where the research comes in, exactly. right? If exactly. Net decking with the research mm -hmm. can become a very positive mm -hmm. thing because sure. then you're becoming a better player, hopefully. You're being you're able to pilot a deck that mm -hmm. feels very refined, feels very clear cut, yep. and is going to do the job. It's The deck is there. It's up to you to make mm -hmm. it good, right? Like yeah. You have to play it to the best of it, its ability. Absolutely. With that research backing you, you have more of the tools than somebody who's just going to pull the list and go to an FNM. Yeah. If they're not researching, if they're not doing that, they're not going to know exactly what to do. That's just how it goes. Like, right. For the most part. And if you you're know. counting on net deckers, I mean, <coughs> you're going to, you will see a lot of the top eight decks, right? Yeah. In the field. Yeah. That's just, it's nice to know what you're up against. Uh, Sun Tzu, the general and the best football coach of all time, Bill Belichick. Uh, <laughs> Uh, he he hang he hung Sun Tzu's quote above his office office like frame or whatever door frame. It says, uh, "The war is won in the preparation," and that has we just got really deep. We went deep in a whole new way that that's, magic has not seen. That's not true. <laughs> Guarantee that's not it. True at all. But, um, <laughs> but it, that is absolutely right. Yeah. If if you plan out your strategy and that's your deck, you plan out that deck. Yeah, you're gonna do well. If it doesn't matter if you found it, guarantee you, Sun Tzu didn't invent the spear, <laughs> but he taught guys how to use it. Bill Belichick <laughs> did not lace up the first football, but he taught the goat how to throw it. Dang it! Is my bias coming out? Dang yet? it! That's all I'm saying. He likes sports ball. I love sports ball. I don't. Any I don't know how to do sports ball. Competition is kind of my. I like doing it, even if I'm bad at it. Um, I like doing competition. I like doing competition. Competitiveness is for me. I, I need <laughs> Put to that on a shirt. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Look out for those uh, Arizona shirts. Um, so those are kind of the general arguments for and against net decking. Yeah. Uh, Kev, all that being said, where do you stand? Tell the people So here's if you're so I'm inclined, at. if you're comfortable. Yeah, I'm comfortable. Like... Um, and you can agree or disagree. I don't really care that much, to be honest. If you disagree, I don't really. It doesn't Talking bother me. me. Yes. Uh, I don't care if you disagree. But, like, my thing is, I don't think net decking is overall a bad thing. Okay. I think in the purest sense of net decking, it, that being pulling a list from the internet and playing it that day or that next day at FNM without the research mm -hmm. is bad. I think that sets you up for failure which sets the community, that local game store FNM community up for a little bit of failure as well because they're going to be up against that deck thinking it's going to be the best and then that player just doesn't know what they're doing, something like that. It's just not a good environment, right? Okay. Like, um, It really hurts the player more when you do net deck to the purest sense of the word more than it hurts that community, though, I oh, think. Oh, sure, of course. Um, and so that's more why you shouldn't do it not just because i don't think it's a good practice but okay i think in general if you do net deck that's fine do your research on it mm -hmm. make sure it's the deck you want to play don't just play it because it won uh play it to what you think is is the strength of the deck right if, if you do want to play black green constrictor that's fine go look at some lists you're gonna need some of those cards like the majority of those cards are in it for a reason so that's you're gonna get there anyway um but 
I do think you should make metagame calls and make decisions based on what you think is good for the deck, not right. just because, oh, I found a list, that's my reason. Mm. You know mm. what I mean? Sure. Um, so I'm not opposed to net decking at all. I know okay. um, I've done it. I mean, yeah. I made a black-green constrictor deck, and that's why I keep using it as an example. But I did make some different calls. I didn't mm. use the 100% list that I found. Yeah, that's true. Because I don't think you need to, right? Like, yeah. I wanted to try something different. And, and in some cases, I think it worked. I don't think I tested enough. Uh, okay. I think I've, I could have tested a lot more. But, you know, I did at least try to test. <laughs> like, you know, I didn't yeah, just pull definitely. the list and be like, all right, going to win FNM tonight, <laughs> uh, which yeah. didn't happen at all. Uh, but, but still. But, I mean, you know, proper research, proper testing, I'm all for net decking. I don't think it's mm -hmm. a bad thing at all. What okay. about you? Um, <coughs> so I'm in the same boat. Mm -hmm. Um for a lot of the same reasons. Yeah. Sorry to disappoint if you wanted We to, agree. Yeah. Weird. Um <laughs> that no, I don't think net decking is a plague in Magic. No, now, I don't think so. When I first started <clears throat> playing standard a little bit more seriously, I did brew my own deck because I thought it was a big shot. And I brewed a Gerard slash Night Howler, fling your guys, graveyard, whatever. Okay. And it was really fun. But it always lost to <laughs> devotion decks. Yeah to control decks which was most of the field yeah at the time and esper control at the time esper um black white um blue white you know yeah run of the mill mm -hmm. um not a ton of is it is it wasn't super big then but still um so yeah uh my list was homebrewed i had some success but <coughs> not nearly as much as i would have liked yeah uh and i got frustrated that's not net decker's fault no, it's not. That's not anyone who found a list's fault. They outplayed you. Yes, they I mean, out they outplayed me, and an argument can be made that they spent more money than me, and which may or may not be true. That's probably that's fair. a whole other argument for sure. Right, that's and that's a fun. whole other thing. I mean, it but, comes down to means and desire at yeah. that point. Um, so I used to think, man, I will never net deck. That's not fair. And yet, I'm still watching deck tech videos. I'm still yeah. looking at uh, Telerian Academy for advice and things on different decks. I so, mean, that's why deck techs are a thing, is to spark an interest in a deck. Of course. Not necessarily to 100% steal, steal. No. You know, no. quote unquote, steal the deck. Um, so I, I used <clears> to think <throat> that way. Um, and then I saw a list I really wanted to play. Yeah. It was, um, it was a, a control list, it was Esper Control. So I, weird ashiok is one of my favorite <laughs> favorite planeswalkers and it played her as the only planeswalker and made her base into the win con yeah. i was like that's awesome i want to do that uh but then i thought wait i'm becoming the enemy <laughs> <laughs> so oddly enough i just uh, want to interject really yeah. quick um the first time i like legit tried to build a standard deck mm -hmm. was during the same block okay uh when esper control was a thing and i I did the stupid thing. I 100% net decked, net oh, decked okay. something. Um, and I thought, oh, well, I'm I'm a control player. I'll get the hang of it. Totally fine. I never played an FNM or anything like that, but I did play against friends who played standard decks at okay. the time. Um, I got my butt handed to me, like, very quickly. And I realized, I think at that point, if you do, you know, net deck for real, mm. you'll realize pretty quickly that's not going to work out for you. <laughs> like... Um, and I say that from experience because I very quickly got just annihilated. Yeah. So I took some time afterwards and researched okay. and actually learned the deck, you know, um, and made changes actually to it. But that that was an eye opening thing for me. Yeah. OK. So, again, <coughs> that's assuming absolutely no knowledge beforehand. Yeah. No testing. You just got a control deck and you're good to go. Right. Yeah. OK. That was exactly what um, I did. Yeah. And we said. That can be a problem for you, and yes, yeah. yes, yes, and a thousand things. There are an unteenth amount of YouTube videos out there that talk about net decking, uh, its goods and its evils. Yeah. Um, we are not the only opinion and the only voice. They're out there. No. Go listen to them. And um, your opinion matters in this. Absolutely. Right? Like anybody in the magic community, mm. you have an opinion on this, and if you don't, that's fine. If you just don't know what we're talking about at all, that's fine. Hopefully, hopefully we, you, you learn some stuff. Um, at this but, point, in the you video. know you're entitled to your opinion mm -hmm. if you think net decking is the worst plague in magic fine tell me about it 
Uh, if you think it. it's fine and you 100% net deck everything, that's okay. your prerogative too. I mean, so you do what you want to do. I'll leave you with the final metaphor. <laughs> I'm a man of many <laughs> metaphors. He was planning this right before the episode. I kind of was. Um, so there's an excellent video um, called Magic the Jazzering. <laughs> Have you seen it? I don't think so. It is awesome. It combines two of my favorite things, mm. Magic the Gathering, shocker, and jazz. Oh, didn't see that coming. Jazz coming. is awesome. Jazz is pretty Jazz sweet. is sweet. Yeah. So think of it like this. <laughs> Magic is the jazz of card games, right? There's a pseudo-randomness to it. Mm -hmm. There's defined terms in that the, there's rules, there's interactions that happen you both know how to play the game you and your opponent what have you but there's ways to improvise on the stack against a trigger what have you yeah right and you can think of these decks magic decks as different instruments okay okay so if you're two professional musicians and you sit down to play uh, a session of jazz you can roll off each other and respond you can play in this key with the scale do this and play the song and it sounds great in Magic, you can do the same thing. If 8-Rack goes against Reanimator, you can you know what's going to go down yeah. You know, a lot of the time. Stuff's going to go in the graveyard, you can reanimate it a lot. 8-Rack doesn't look good in that matchup. We know that. <laughs> do you want two jazz musicians to have to make their instrument every time they go down to play a set? Here's a brand new thing. I call it the Sforgophone. <laughs> you play it with your toes, but you have to look like this. Each time you do it. This you would, metaphor started off good and it's going downhill now. But no. Anyway, go ahead. But realistically, <laughs> do you want someone to have to create their own saxophone every time they go to a session? No. Their own drums? Their mm -hmm. own guitar? No. No, you don't. <laughs> Magic exists so well and is so competitive because there's all those defined terms. And yeah. net decking just helps you define those terms. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It it allows for a flexible creativity within a parameter and a paradigm. And that's always been the beauty of magic is there's ways to take the game and play it your own way. Just like jazz, Louis Armstrong plays the trumpet way different, excuse me, the horn way different than <laughs> anybody else because he's Louis freaking Armstrong. Just yeah. like Yu Yu Watanabe plays Thoughtseize way different than everybody else. <laughs> and that's what I'm going to leave you with. All right. All right. How'd that turn out? Uh, that was pretty good. Better than I was expecting when you started off. I was really confused at first. Um, you just gotta listen. Give him, give him a rating out of ten. Yeah, How do you think me. that metaphor ended up <laughs> coming up? Just let me know. Um, and that again, that is not my <laughs> idea. Comparing Magic to Jazz, the Magic the Jazzering. Go watch it. It's really cool. Um, I just kind of right. took it and ran with it. All right, so. fair enough. Um. Well, again, just some open discussion about net decking as mm -hmm. it applies to standard mostly. Yeah. Uh, and that's why we sort of threw it into the standard episode this mm -hmm. week. Uh, but we do encourage your comments, your suggestions, and your feedback as far as yeah. what you think on it. Um, throw it in the comment section below. Please. Or I, send us an angry message. That's fine, too. Yeah, either or. I, I would really just love to hear what someone yeah, thinks, yeah, um, especially if you disagree. Um, yeah, I think those are the with anything interesting I said, conversations. If you think magic is the bluegrass of card games tell me that too we can talk about that which i guess <laughs> you, 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 you can make an argument for that i suppose you don't like bluegrass no no oh, okay not really right. um <laughs> i do that's okay i like many musics <laughs> i like a lot of music i don't know about bluegrass apparently not good genres. okay um <clears throat> so we are gonna go into our final segment of before the day. we go into our what's, final segment what's wrong kevin wow Anyway, before we go into our final segment, we also want to mention our 500 follower giveaway, uh, which is going on on Instagram. We're not quite at 500 yet, so we're hoping to get there soon. Once we do, we're going to be giving away one of these awesome cups printed by our good friend, Andrew. Uh, shout man. out to Andrew, doing the most for us as yeah. far as that stuff yeah. goes. I got um, a bumper sticker. <laughs> it's sweet. So with this, we'll also be throwing in a few packs, things like yep. that. Um, just to clarify, it will not be this exact cup. This is mine. <laughs> right. We have we have it's one safe. that is not used. You've seen him been. You've seen him drinking. I've out been of drinking it. out of this for like it's three episodes. It's not that cup. Now. No, I promise. It's um, a different cup. <laughs> um, but we do. We're gonna throw some packs in, things like that. Uh, again, this will start once we hit 500 followers on Instagram. Yes. We're very close. Uh, I believe less than 50 away. So 
yes. get us there and we will get you a cup. Not all of you. Not all of you. One lucky winner. One lucky winner. Sorry. Um, all right, now. Yes, our final segment <laughs> of the day is our crack a pack. Our packs come pre cracked, though we don't know what's in them. Sponsored, of course, as always, by Grand Slam yes. Cards and Collectibles. Doing the, the most. Uh, awesome card shop, uh, yeah. Rock Hill, South Carolina. If you're into the Pokemon TCG, uh, which I've watched a few matches of, I don't completely understand it right off the bat. I used to kinda, play it. No, it seems kind of neat. No. Um, <laughs> they do a ton with the Pokemon trading card game. Um, yeah. They do giveaways. Uh, they have a Pokemon Day <laughs> Saturday. Uh, go check them out. Go see what they're up to. Of course, Magic as well. Yep. Um, on- Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic, sports cards, Pokemon, yeah. comics. Tons of, All of signed the baseball cards if you collect those. Go yeah, they do out. a lot of stuff. Um, as always, though, we do have our Crack-A-Pack with our goal cards in mind. I'm looking for Gideon of the Trials, and I did not get it. I am looking for Combat Celebrant, and he's here, Kevin. I can feel it. Anyway, uh, I'll go into my pack really quick. You said that like you knew. <laughs> Weird. Um, I got Pull From Tomorrow, which is actually a great oh, card. Uh, yes. I love this card. It's actually played in any control deck right now. That was nice. Thank you. That was really nice. Um, <laughs> that was a planes, by the way. Uh, X and two blue for an instant. Draw X cards and then discard a card. Seems great. Oh, uh, it's fantastic. Definitely, I think, the pick here. Uh, other cards really? that I also like. Yeah, I like Pull From Tomorrow. I'd be interested in trying it. Um, I don't know how I do in limited. It's a great card. I'm I don't just... know either. That's why I want to pick it because I'd like to know. Um, I just never had the opportunity to first sure. pick it, so I thought I'd try it. Um, it's probably pretty good. Yeah. I also have a battlefield scavenger, which mm. is great. Uh, Defiant Great Maw, also pretty good. It's, yeah. Uh, it's cartouche better. of Ambition, which is a decent cartouche. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Quarry Hauler, which is just a solid green creature. Yeah, um, I I like Great Maw out of that. I think so. Down there. Honest, without pull for Noir, I think great mob is probably yeah. the pick a four five for three that shrinks creatures you control yeah that, that seems really good seems good um not the shrinking part it's kind of bad unless you well, play yeah. with those um what'd you get so my rare was canyon's law bicycle huh. land not thanks, good thanks man uh <laughs> i disagree man uh now well okay it's <laughs> now. it's good in living end yeah and in limited <clears throat> no not getting limited. No. Um, no you're both picking a land <laughs> first pick and two colors first pick. Uh, no bueno. Um, some other things I got, though. Colossipede is always nice to see. <laughs> um, Desert Ceradon's all right. I don't know about first pickable, Ooh. really. Uh, and I've got Gale Strike as well. Um, True Heart Twins is okay, I've found. Oh, he's right over there. Yeah. I was like, I didn't pull that. Sure did. I like True Heart Twins. Um, I've also got a Trial of Zeal. Um, that is the pick. I, think. I really like Trial of Zeal. Yeah, it's one of the best. I think it is. Um, three to creature or player in limited seems really nice. Uh, and to be able to play that again. Yeah. I mean, that's cool. Sure Heart is awesome, and it probably will not come back to me. No, if we're, I don't think so. If we're drafting this. Um, but it's great. So, uh, True Heart Twins or trial trial i think i'd be trial for me i think removal's very important and limited and yeah. so three damage repeatable three damage is a great i know i potentially said repeatable. i said last episode i like picking permanents first um yeah you're wrong i mean it's an enchantment but it's a one of effect <laughs> um but removal and limited it should not go ignored so no, i think that's my thing man fair enough cool i like it Thanks. all right guys uh with that again a huge thank you to grand slam and to andrew for all of your help uh on both these giveaway cups and the crack a pack yes um, huge thank you guys again we encourage you to leave comments uh leave likes leave dislikes leave whatever you want did uh, we uh forget to mention something did yeah. we mention something you've never heard before what do you think let us know. Uh, but us. with that, guys, we are going to get out of here. This has been the Friday episode. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. And this has been It Resolves.